getting off on the right foot. Um, it's a bit corny, I have to admit. And uh, the thing is, in terms of football manager, many people treat this as an afterthought. I got a, a comment on my YouTube channel recently um, about footedness. Somebody asked the question. So today, I'm doing this video. And hopefully, after you understand it, you might even be able to get your striker to score even more goals. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel. This is the place where I do shorter form content for the Game Football Manager with hints, tips, guides. Sometimes, maybe occasionally, I do. I might do a playthrough for a game, but it's usually going to be focused on certain aspects of tactics. If you want to see live streams where I play through an entire game with Football Manager, then hop on to Dalgis Moments. This is my other YouTube channel, and I stream there three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please feel free to bring your tactics along, and if you have any questions, I will try and help you out. Occasionally, I may even take somebody's random save just to look at tactics that the community, you know, asks me to take a look at. Today, the foot. It's such a weird way to do a show, man. Okay, before I begin, a shout out to Vesely Ignato for his question. I'm going to break it down into two main parts. How does footedness affect movement? And how does it affect players who are predominantly strong in one foot? You know, those left only and right only players. Well, thanks for sending in the question. Uh, it's so cool do, doing uh, these kind of shows where I'm answering your questions and I hope that you guys keep on sending me those questions. Don't forget, drop them in the comments below. Any more questions that follow up on this and I'll try my best to answer them either here on a separate show or may, perhaps on, a live, on an upcoming live stream. When it comes to movement, don't think for a moment that a player should always be playing on the site his foot is strongest on. So if it's predominantly left only, you have to play him on the left flank. Or if it's predominantly right only, you have to play him on the right flank. Uh, that's that's not really true because players who are left or right, the first thing you need to understand is how their movement is affected by their preference for their foot. The first, the first thing you want to do when you go and look at a player is find out which positions he's comfortable playing in. So if he's a left fullback and well, he's got a strong left foot. He might also be able to play as a right fullback. However, he's going to play differently when he's playing on the right flank. Because if he has got a preference for his left foot, then when he's playing on the right side, he's going to cut inside with the ball. And this is very significant for certain roles. Like, for example, the inverted wingback. The inverted wingback is a very interesting role because he cuts inside when he has the ball. So he's always sitting in the DM slot. Now, if that if you play a right-footed player as an inverted wingback on the left side, he won't prop, he won't overlap. Even if you give the overlap instruction, chances are he might not. He may occasionally, but his preference for most of the match is going to be to cut inside, and he's going to stay on the in, in stay in between players. He's going to stay in the middle of the pitch. Whereas if you play with a player who's predominantly left only, or he has a strong preference for his left foot and you play him as an inverted wing back on the left side of the pitch, occasionally when there is space on the left flank, he might overlap and go down the left. What do you want to be more worried about in the game of football manager is whether a player can play in the position. Whether, if he has the attributes for it, he can always be retrained to become better in the position. So you could always take a fullback and play him as a defensive midfielder, he might start awkward at first, but after six months, he'll become accomplished. Maybe after a year, he'll become very good in the position and you don't have to worry anymore. So the only challenge is during the early days when he's playing in the new position and learning that new position, he might, you know, make a couple of mistakes. And this applies to when you are playing a player who's got a strong left foot on the right side of the pitch. He may not be used to that position. He might make a couple of mistakes. And that's something that you have to accept. Over time, he will get better in the position and he will, you know, he may even develop a preference for a certain foot. So he might even get, he might even get stronger with the right foot. Now, this depends on whether or not your general training includes technique. So you need to have sessions that include the attribute technique so that he can also work on his right foot. There are no rules in this game that we have to follow rigidly. I have a lot of fun with this game. 
Like for example, I've played uh, wingers on the left flank who are right only. Why? Because I want them to cut inside. Because um, as a winger, sometimes he goes down the flank and then he opens his body up looking for the pass inside because he can't cross the ball with his left foot. So what he looks for is support. Then you start thinking about whether or not you have a fullback coming up to give him support or maybe even a Mazala on that side of the pitch who, you know, he lays the pass off of the Mazala. The Mazala plays, a, you know, that Kevin De Bruyne pass. So those are things that are, are going to be available to you when you start thinking about playing different players in uh, different positions. Currently, one of my favorite 4 to 4 formations plays with a right-footed player playing on the left flank as a winger. Because I just love the fact that he cuts inside occasionally or he goes wide and then he waits for the wing back to come up the pitch. And then the wing back drops in the cross because he can't cross with his left foot. He has to look inside and when he looks inside, voila, the wing back is there. I mean, there's so many permutations. I mean, you've got inverted wing backs who have gets into opposition area. Yes, we do have fullbacks who have that. And uh, that means they can also shoot. So imagine playing a right-footed inverted wing back on the left side. He stays inside and then when he gets up the pitch, he wants to shoot for goal. And he's, you know, that's the best angle for somebody coming in from the left side. You know, if you are coming in from the left side, you want to use your right foot. And this is where understanding footedness can also help your strikers. I have a tactic which has got a 4-4-2. Two, two striker systems are the easiest to understand because you've got two strikers in two different positions. And uh, I had Shearhouse playing on the right side of a two-man strike partnership. And he's a strong preference for a right foot. He didn't score so many goals. I was struggling at the start of the season. And then I realized, oh no, <laughs> thank you for your question, Vaseline. Because I started looking at my own tactic and I realized, oh, I was making a very fundamental mistake. I even did this in a draft one match where the striker playing on the wrong side. So when I moved him to the left side, because he's got a preference for his right foot, the whole angle of the goal opens up. So as he's coming in, he can use his right foot and the angle becomes bigger. So he starts scoring more goals. So this has implications for how you want to use your strikers as well. Understanding which is their preferred foot so that it helps, you know, you can create a tactic in such a way that he's always coming in on his preferred foot to score goals. When it comes to lone striker systems, then it depends on which uh, side of the pitch your lone striker is going to drift to. Sometimes they stay in the pocket. They stay right back in the center, which makes it really easy, right? Then you don't have to worry about the preference for his feet. Um, but if he's if you have moved into channels on a striker and he moves, drifts to the left, then he needs to come in on his right to score. The same, the reverse holds true if you have moved into channels and your tactic seems to favor him moving to the right. So pay attention to which channel your striker is attacking. So if it's attacking the left channel in your tactic, then you want to get, make sure that the striker has a preference for his right foot. That's basically it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of getting off on the right foot. <laughs> I want to thank Vaseline once again for his question. It seems simple enough. Um, I sometimes forget this can be quite a significant part of the whole um, create the tactic process with the game football manager. Uh, and I've forgotten this many, many times. So... Thanks to him, it so, so helped me um, forestall a probable bad run with Forrest as well. So thank you, my good man, for your question, because it helped me too. Uh, if you have any further questions, you guys know where to find me. You can always look me up on uh, my handle, Twitter at Bustanet or AddictedToFM.com, my website. Once again, I want to thank everybody for their continued support. Don't forget, I stream three times a week on Dalgis Moments. You can always ask me questions there. You guys stay safe, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.